You're listening to No Hipsters Pod. Now, Lady Gaga had offered to pay half a million dollars to get her dogs back, a huge mm. sum of money uh, for two little pups. Uh, do we know, was any ransom money paid <laughs> in the end? We don't know. Uh, usually when these things happen, whoever comes in uh, with whatever the authorities are looking for is questioned before there's any money released. So uh, that's probably going to happen first. So as of yet, we don't know. All right. But at least the pups are safely back at home. Ronse Esangbedo, thanks so much for your Indeed. time. Episode 35, No Hipsters Pod, your boy Ronse. And this week, our co-host is my girl, Teresa. Hi, how are you? Welcome back. It's been a minute. I know. I'm so glad to be back. Let's get right to it. So uh, last night, the Golden Globes went down and it was the first uh, post-pandemic ceremony. And I thought it was actually, you know, pretty well done. And, and because it's been like it's it's it, it had the fortune of not being right after the pandemic started. I think they were able to have a bit of in-person and virtual. Mm-hmm. So I thought it was pretty well done. And um, yeah, I like the show. What, what do you think? I I did like the show. I always feel like with um with everything that's happening right now and just kind of seeing a lot of these celebrities do things from home, it's been really interesting to watch too. Right. And um I don't know if you saw like how much of did you I didn't sit through the whole thing. I'm gonna have to like, you know, admit, confess. I didn't watch it all, <laughs> mm-hmm. but I saw most of it and I thought it was pretty good. And I thought uh, a lot of people like came as far as like fashion's concerned. Like, I mean uh, Viola Davis. Yes. Uh, uh, C- Cynthia Revo, um yes. Tiffany Haddish really looked the best I've ever seen her. So. I was going to say that. I was actually really proud of Tiffany Haddish. Yeah. I think she's actually really started to come into her own in terms of um, what her image is right. as a celebrity. Right. Um, but I, I did get to see a good portion of it. I'm not going to lie. A lot of these award shows have lost my attention. Um, but with this one in particular, I definitely felt like they, they did a, a lot of things right. Of course, I tuned in for um, what was it? Oh, I definitely tuned in, of course, for Chadwick's wife's um, speech. Accepted ta- speech. Taylor, yes. Taylor Simone Ledward. Yes. Yeah. Um, and if anybody watched that and did not cry, I want to know where your heart is located. <laughs> he would thank God. He would thank his parents. He would thank his ancestors for their guidance and their sacrifices. Okay. <laughs> it was just such a so beautiful- sad. Yes. And and just the way that they knew to kind of um, still be able to pan to the multiple people who were close to him. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, it just it was such a a very, very nice portion of the evening. Um, A lot of these movies really kind of caught me off guard. Um, some of the series as well, mm. um, but I I still haven't watched Emily in Paris, so you know, right, <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. But you know, uh, Daniel Kaluuya won, um, and oh, yeah. and John Boyega won, and so so this one I still haven't seen Judas and the Black Messiah, so it's I didn't realize that he was a supporting uh, cast member, and then um, I didn't know that that counts as a supporting cast member either. I I saw him kind of more as like the the lead in the, in the film. Yeah. I mean, they definitely, um, they definitely sold it as a, a Daniel Kalia. You know, and if you pick. watched it, I watched it. I, I, I bought it. I, I thought that as well. Okay. Um, his, he also just, he really, really performed that role really, really well. It was the different light that um, a lot of people said they saw in him. I know that a, a lot of women said that, Oh, you know, they, they never looked at him it, in this light before, but like it's just kind of like the strength that he had to exude as this 20 year old leader of a movement. It just, he brought a lot to the role that gave it life. Right. Um, so that was really good. There was a, a, a few other winners. Um, Cause I think John Boyega run for a small acts, right? R- yes. And yeah. he was, that was also a supporting role. So they, they took the first two trophies of the night and then there were just a whole bunch of others. I was, I was kind of like half paying attention because I remember being disappointed when the nominees came out a while back. So, and also mm. because, you know, uh, Michaela Cole was not nominated. I, I was kind of sour about that whole category. I was as well. There were, there was another snub of the night that I will have to say that, that, that kind of did get to me. And it definitely was, um, um, the fact that Lovecraft Country didn't win anything. Um, and I think they lost to um, 
uh, they lost to the crown and the crown cleaned up pretty much. Whoa. The whole I mean, I haven't seen the crown, but I, I've, I mean, people have been pretty consistent and unanimous in mm-hmm. saying that it's, it's, it's a good show. And just based on the picks, like that, the actress that played Diana, I, I'm willing to believe. Oh, and she won. Yeah, she, she did. Won yeah, she, she won. And so I, I'm willing to believe that she deserved it, even though I haven't actually seen the show. But I, I've heard that she, that she killed that shit. So it was a it was a great great series. I de- I personally just didn't find it to be the best television series drama. Gotcha. Um, it wasn't necessarily like hanging off the seat television drama. I felt as though each of the um, characters were um, very, very uh, great for the roles that they played. And each of them took something home, I think, except for the actress who ends up playing um, Princess Margaret, which surprised me because um, she's known as one of the UK's most successful actresses and she was in Sweeney Todd, Les Mis, and um, oh, wow. Hocus Pocus. Um, yeah, so she was the only one that didn't win, but she lost to her castmate, oh. who, um, who had actually uh, played Margaret Thatcher. Gotcha, gotcha. And that actually probably was one of the most, um, one of my favorite characters from the Crown series um, was the Margaret Thatcher character. Gotcha. I remember logging into Twitter and seeing people say, like, I had to Google what Mar- the real Margaret Thatcher sounds like because this actress is really making me think, like, this is the real Margaret Thatcher that we're watching. <laughs> she's, she's, she's got me convinced that this is how she talked. This is how her, her it just, but she did a great job. Okay. Um, but the crown beating out Lovecraft Country for me just kind of was a, a sour moment for the night. Um, and I didn't know that Sasha Baron Cohen did as much work as he did. Um, not surprised, but he, the Borat movie, I guess, took home some prizes. Right. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, those were um, pretty much my highlights from from what I, I saw of the night. Yeah, it was a good show overall. I mean, I, I'm ready for us to have like real ceremonies, but I thought they did well, and hopefully, we're not doing it this way next year. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> All right, let's uh, talk about Lady Gaga and her French bulldogs. <laughs> two, two, of, two of which were dog napped at gunpoint so on wednesday the 24th uh her dog walker his name is ryan fisher he was walking her dogs in hollywood and two gunmen um you know tried to steal them from him and they ended up taking two of them and i guess mm-hmm. the third dog ran away or escaped in the process of the robber of the dog napping My and dog. so yeah and so apparently he was shot in the chest which I think is extreme. Like, I mean, for oh, any situation, God. but like for a dog situation, like a dog napping, that, that feels extreme. But all that happened, and I guess she comes out, says that she's willing to pay a $500,000 ransom for the safe return of the dogs. And next thing you know, some good Samaritan finds the dogs mm-hmm. tied to a pole in an alley. So Are we surprised here? No, okay. but I mean, I'm, I'm, tr- I'm trying not to like, you know, jump to conclusions, but the whole thing smells fishy. And I feel like there's a lot left on this story. What do you think? I agree. I agree a hundred percent. And I think that this is extremely targeted. It just is way too specific. Right. And it's, it's unfortunate that somebody was hurt um, seriously and that the news is kind of more uh, concerned about these dogs. Um, <laughs> but Hey, you know, I guess that's the world we live in. Um, but the fact that somebody would go to this length to be able to extort money out of someone also is just extremely low as well, because to say that they were tied up somewhere and that's how they were found. I don't, I'm not buying it. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it's not like all that trouble shooting someone only for them to be found that easily. It, it's I, I find that hard to believe. So, I mean, I don't know if the if the lady who turned them in has you know gotten the the reward, <laughs> but is. yeah, but yeah, I'm 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 honestly suspecting her. For a while, I was actually suspecting the dog walker as well. But now that I think about it, taking a, a shot to the chest seems like a quite a... lot to do for some dogs. <laughs> right, yeah. For, for $500,000 just isn't quite, you know, enough for that kind of risk. So, um, yeah, I don't know. But it's, it's really it's really interesting. And, um, and uh, I, I'm really, really 
uh, looking closely because he describes a gunman as being both black and between the ages of 20 and 25. So uh, that's another part. I mean, because, you know, like usually when uh, there is a trickery or, you know, there's some sort of lying involved, that's usually the go to. So. That's kind of you know. I'm not saying that, I, that he's lying, but that that part was like, hmm. Let's 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 blame let's blame a 19 year old black child running around here. <laughs> and let's, and see, <laughs> let's tie the dogs up to the pole. <laughs> and then, and then because listen, days, let's return them safely and unharmed. Right, right. It's just I'm not saying that it's impossible that this happened, but as far as this country and people lying about crimes that happen usually the go-to is a black suspect. So we'll see. I mean, the the, the whole thing is caught on camera, uh, at least not, I mean, it's very grainy footage, but there was a uh, camera that saw some of it. So the truth will come out eventually. Is this, this is a juicy Smollett? Or uh, <laughs> is this a real kidnapping? <laughs> the world may never know. Right, right. We'll see. Let's change gears and let's talk about... Michael B. Jordan potentially playing Superman. Woo! I'm excited. Oh. I'm excited. Oh, wow. I'm here for it. Oh, I even laugh. That's that's amazing because I I think he would be a horrible choice. <laughs> but you know, in, in any case, the, uh, according to reports, he is a top contender for the role. J.J. Abrams is is directing. Tommy Coates is going to be writing the script, and um, you know that's all we know so far. And I listen, I, I was actually stumped when I, I was thinking about an alternative to Michael B. Jordan, but I saw someone tweet that Trevante Rhodes would be a better fit. And I'm, oh I my God, a hundred percent better. I just don't know that Michael B. Jordan is, is, you know, I don't see it, but uh, apparently you do. So, um, oh my God, I never, the, I never knew about the Trevante Rhodes consideration. <laughs> no, I don't think they're, they're considering. I think it's what a fan wants. And I, I, I think that would make a better choice. I'm going to put my, I'm going to put my bets on that as well. But I do, yeah. I do think that this is great um, for Michael B. Jordan specifically also just because of where he's trying to um, grow his career. I do mm-hmm. think that he's been focusing on taking a lot of um, roles that show um, black strength and excellence and um, mm-hmm. a lot of uh, unpaved roads um, because I feel as though he's really focusing on trying to um, secure his career legacy as far as acting goes. And um, this is just one of those steps that I feel like each each great male lead kind of needs to decide like, when are they going to step up to the strong hero role to, you know, kind of round out my, I am the sex symbol actor, but a serious actor, (laughs) you know? Well, I don't think, I don't think you become a serious actor with a superhero movie. Oh no, 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 not at all. But I do, I do kind of feel like, you know, you need a James Bond or something in there to kind of throw everything into a full, a full circle of I'm well-rounded. Um, (laughs) but I think, I think that, you know, the superhero role for him also kind of, um, it kind of is a good parallel when you think about the role that he played, um, in Rocky, um, as the Apollo, I'm sorry, the Apollo, uh, Creed. Yeah the Apollo Creed character. Um, so I, that's how I kind of pictured it kind of is like, that's probably more so of the Michael B. Jordan that we can expect from that role. And I'm just, I, I, I love seeing him win. Yeah, me too. Me too. I mean, I don't think he's the greatest actor, but I have no reason to not root for him. Um, so we'll see. I, I definitely think he'll make it. Actually, he expressed interest in the role of a couple years ago. I think he was interviewed by Oprah, I think. And she asked um, about, like, you know, future roles. And I think this this role came up. And he said that he wanted to be Calvin Ellis as opposed to Clark Kent. Now, so Calvin Ellis is the uh, new iteration of Superman that, that was written after Obama became president and it's actually loosely based on Barack Obama. Mm. And so it is a black uh, Kryptonian who happens to become president of the United States and is also Superman. And so that that is who this movie will be about, not Clark Kent. And so, yeah. you know, based on that and the fact that, you know, he expressly said he wanted to be Calvin Ellis, I think it's very possible that this is already happening. Ah, that is a very good point. I didn't even yeah. consider that. Huh. 
I, yeah, well, I, yeah, hope, yeah. I hope it does. I hope it does work out for him. Um, and also, if it doesn't work out for him, I would like to just find out where this tweet is living so that way we can make sure that Trevante Rhodes knows <laughs> that the world needs him. <laughs> Right, right. But we'll see. I'm, either way, I'm just excited about the project. I think it's going to be a good one. So we'll see. Changing gears. So Deborah Wilson, um, uh, former Mad TV cast member, and really the the star, in my opinion, uh, was um, interviewed by Comedy Hype News recently, and they asked why she left um, this the you know the sketch show while she was while in its heydays, right? Mm-hmm. Like the show was still successful. It wasn't like, you know, uh, waning in popularity quite yet. And she left and it turns out that she left because she found out that a newer cast member who happened to be a white man was being paid more than she was. I recognize that um, there are people who came in after me. I was a tenured uh, a, a cast member from the beginning, from pilot. And, um, and people were coming in after me, making more than me. Mm. Wow, wow. Hold up, hold up, hold up. And when I realized that there was, you know, white male cast members who were coming in after me, making more than me, I went, okay, can we talk about this? And the answer essentially was no. And, I mean, it's just... It's heartbreaking, right? And I think uh, even for regular people like you and I who aren't working in uh, these types of you know careers, even like in the corporate world, like I think so many of us can relate to just feeling undervalued. And so that was pretty much it for her. Like you know, like you know, you don't think that I, who basically carrying the show on my back, deserves to be paid more than a newer cast member. Yeah. So that um that def- hearing that definitely was. Um, disappointing because uh, the the prominence that Deborah Wilson carries just in the culture for her impersonations of Whitney Houston alone or Oprah, right, um, right, is just like, like she was the best. There's like, no there's no other impersonation of either women that I would think of and and not have Deborah Wilson's face come to mind. Right. I think that um, also, like, as soon as I watched this, because the full interview actually is very long. It's about 45 minutes of her um, basically going into detail about how she ended up there um, and how she was treated there. Um, and it's really kind of just. It's interesting to hear that it's ha- that it happened to her because it wasn't that long ago. Mad TV aired in 95. And it yeah. only stayed on air for about 14 seasons. So for her to have been a part of eight seasons and was underpaid in the eighth, that is like, you, that happened <laughs> less than, you know, 12 years ago. So it's kind of like, eh, right. this is, this is recent. This is still very relevant and right. it's likely still happening in a lot of different spaces. Um, only other people I can even remember from Mad TV um, are Orlando Jones. Orlando Jones, Deborah Wilson, and Michael McDonald. Yeah. I, I couldn't, and actually, no, that's not true. Um, Susan Bordenstein, Bordenstein. Nope, never heard of her. The, the one that does a uh, uh, look, look like a oh, man. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Al- Alex, Bo- Al- I think it's Alex Bornstein, I believe. Is her oh name. yeah. But as you as you can see, we don't like she, name is not top of no, mind. No, but or, Deborah know, Wilson it, immediately as soon as I hear that, I, I, I knew exactly who she was and what she's done, right. and um, and you know, it's not necessarily the, oh, and Ari er- Ari er- 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 Spears. Oh yes, 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 yes. He yes. did. He did join the cast later. Yes, but right. Deborah was there from the beginning. In fact, I think she said she was the first person that they ever casted. So to be that disrespected, oh. <laughs> and you were—you essentially were the person that the entire vision was built around. Because to be cast first, and everyone else is based off of you and off of right. their chemistry with you. So, um, yeah, she was the first person cast. Um, and this all happened, and she essentially... If you ask me, if I'm able to write the records, I would say she's a part of the biggest reason why Mad TV was even able to hold a candle to their TV nemesis, Saturday Night Live. Right. 
Like I, I definitely remember feeling like Matt TV was the funnier skit mm-hmm. show. Matt and TV went that, there. It was a little bit more risque, but yeah. like Matt TV had Deborah had Deborah and it, it had Orlando. And they they had like this special magic. And then they had, you know, a couple different sketches that people really kind of really hung on to. Yeah, like lowered expectations. Like that theme song sticks yes. with me forever. <laughs> and ever time I see anyone doing some like basic ass shit, that song plays in my head. Yes. So if we're you able know, to even it's... start a petition to get Deborah her, her money back. I would. <laughs> I mean, listen, just let me know where to sign because honestly, they owe her. She they owe her, and it's 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 white yeah. men again uh, making sure that their pockets are laced. And um, she she handled it the way that a lot of um, a lot of overlooked black women do handle and approach these situations where it's that there's not much power that you have over the situation. You either stay or you go. Um, and thankfully, yeah. she she was able to still have a successful career in voice work and in everything else that she did. Um, but right. uh, sis, uh, sis still they still owe her a check. Right. And this is, uh, you know, slightly off topic, but I didn't realize she was such a rocker. Like she has like the, what the, the, the gauges in her oh, ear. Yeah. Or when I saw it, that, yeah. I was like, oh, huh. Well, who do? <laughs> I would have had no idea. Yeah, that is, but not, that like is it. not who I pictured when she when she gets on stage. <laughs> not, not, not at all. Not at all. Taraji P. Henson said she got paid $40,000 for Benjamin Button. Oh, I saw that. And I almost still can't believe it. Like, what the hell is going on in Hollywood? Yeah. 40,000. I mean, I know she wasn't the star mm-hmm. of the movie, but 40, 40 stacks? Total. Come on, man. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, is that when a lot of these, a lot of these stories come to light, um, you hardly ever hear about what levels of like um, just kind of like a atonement really for some of these like crimes in terms of, you know, how little these artists have been actually, you know, uh, reciprocated for their contributions. Um, and I've, I've in very few cases heard of some of their fellow castmates um, suggesting that, you know, they, they give some of what their pay was, but like, I think it's time for Hollywood to also take a very serious consideration into looking at some of these, um, these huge (laughs) production houses that are making these deals and are allowing this to happen. So, right. Because I know for I mean, there's no way Brad Pitt didn't take at least like ten million for that oh, role, of right? Course. Of course, you know. So why? I mean, and that's why we have to keep shouting mm-hmm. Monique out because you know, this this, this that's Monique what she be talking knew. about. Monique knew. <laughs> Monique knew. Yeah, this we is owe her so many apologies. We owe her so many apologies because Monique tried to tell us. And the thing is that we knew right. as well, but a part of us were just kind of like, it's just, it's Monique. <laughs> right. And, you know, and just to clarify, so um, actually Taraji B. Henson got 150 and originally was offered $100,000. And I believe after like maybe paying agents and taxes or whatever, she ended up getting to keep 40,000 for just to clarify. So yeah, it's quite That's sad. still but, very little. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we know that Brad Pitt earned in the millions. We know that Kate, Kate Blanchett earned in the millions. So why can you throw her at least, at One least a, you know what? Even if she, you, <laughs> right. Even if you thought her role was that unimportant, you know, 800,000, 900, like Jesus. And she ended up being nominated for an Oscar for that role. So, hmm. I mean, yeah. well, when they try to pay <sighs> you in exposure, <laughs> that's literally <laughs> what happened. But when they try to it. pay you in exposure, Lord, yeah. And just another uh, unrelated, but I think this is um, I, I there is there's overlap as far as uh, the theme. So Daniel Kaluuya 
says that he wasn't invited to the premiere of Get Out, which is quite shocking to me. Because he's literally literally the star of the movie. I mean, why did this happen? That you, you didn't go to the premiere? You weren't invited to the premiere? No, they didn't, they didn't invite me, bro. They didn't invite no, me. That no, that can't be true. On, on the Sundance World premiere, yeah, I was in Atlanta because I was shooting Panther. I was shooting Panther and then I was chilling and I was like, okay, my schedule. I was like, yo, I really wanted it. And then just didn't, they just didn't get an invite, man. Just didn't get it. I didn't, I wasn't, I wasn't invited. So I was just in my bed. <laughs> Someone texts me, it's gone really well. I'm like, all right, that's cool. That's all right. Yeah. <laughs> God. That's the industry, Graham. Yeah, no. mate. This is the oh, game. Somebody <laughs> fucked up. Yeah, I mean, no, no, no. <laughs> has this come up since then? Like, have you asked them about it? No, no. You know, I don't ask questions. I just, ah, oh, I get it, man. That's cool. Like, I, I like, I, it's I'm not very cool. good. I have nice so cool. I, I would send a stern left-handed I'd, I'd note. Email. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. You don't want to be in a place that you don't feel wanted. You feel me? How does that happen? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I feel I feel like things like this happen very often and that these are very clear signs of how racist <laughs> that things still very much are because as this happened, nobody thought twice. There there I had never seemed to have been any type of apology note. It's it seems to be one of those things where they hope no one notices. But that's, he's literally the face. He's on the poster. Mm. Well, I think, I think we've seen, I think we've seen how white Hollywood is. If they could have, they probably would have shrunk him on the poster. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they would have, they would have put his wow, name wow, in the wow. corner. <laughs> mm. um, it's actually, it's actually extremely insulting at the fact that you know what the movie is about as well <laughs> right it's yes. like is there any more irony that you can you can pull from this situation but the fact is is that um, I'm sure at some point his castmates and um, a lot of the staff and the people who actually did attend knew that this person should be here and deserves to be here so my question is you know how well are we advocating when we see certain things happening in the industry? Um, you know, I just, I'm, I'm confused. Like how, how do you guys go and, you know, you get a table all together and, and send a group picture. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe they, maybe they showed up and realized that he, I mean, do you, is that the sort of thing they know ahead of time? Like, uh, it's just, I mean, he it's, did it's say strange. he did say he received a text saying that we won, and he was like, "Oh, okay, cool." <laughs> like, I guess that's a I guess that's a decent consolation prize. I don't know. Winners and losers, Teresa. I will let you go first. Oh, okay. Um, hmm. I would say. Oh well, you know what? I would definitely say that um, my winner would definitely be everyone who is Black that won <laughs> this weekend. Um, I just, I genuinely was was happy seeing that there are a few more um, Black nominees, um, Black creators um, who are being celebrated, um, even though Lovecraft Country should have should have gotten there. Um, but very, very happy for John Boyega, um, Chadwick Boseman uh, and the rest of their cast and everyone else that won. Um, my loser, uh, I would say my loser for the week would be um, Mad TV, um, which absolutely, <laughs> honestly, um, now hearing some of um, what was going on in the background, um, Fox canceling Mad TV 14 seasons in and Saturday Night Live still going strong on television also further goes to show you that how you handle business in the background will always end up coming to light. And I'm pretty sure that losing a star like Deborah Wilson is one of those kick yourself moments because how did you let that happen? How did you fumble the bag like that? Unforced yeah. error. Just totally. All right, so my winner is D'Angelo. So he had the verses, D'Angelo and Friends, and his he can still sing. Yes, and it was I thought it was good. You know, I didn't see all of it, um, but I thought it was great. And you know, I was actually surprised that he was as short as he is. I, for some reason, I always 
pictured him being taller, but I looked it up. He's like five, six. And, and, um, yeah, that was, that was a surprise. Um, and not, and this is not me being hiatist in any way. I just Mm -hmm. expected him to be taller, but yeah, I thought it was good. (laughs) I thought it was good. And I thought, um, you know, the performances are great. And especially the, the one with, with her. Your love made me 15 feet tall But how did I go through with the draw? Cause nothing even matters I thought it was really good, so Yeah D'Angelo, Yeah, D'Angelo was my first winner And my second winner is Bobby Schmurder mm, And Welcome on Bobby Yeah, you know, it's just, you know, it's good to See that he can get back to his career Um, I, I you know, I, I I'm not trying to, you know, glorify this whole, like, Kodo, yeah, he didn't snitch or whatever. Like, I'm not really concerned with that. I'm just happy to see that he can get back to his career. So, good for him. And my losers, T.I. and Tiny, for sure. So, 11 new accusers came forward yesterday and had uh similar allegations and you know one of them says she was 17 and interning at uh, ti studio when she was uh you know made to you know take pills and then she actually woke up with pains and was um you know not to be graphic but pains in her anus and was bleeding from her vagina and so um yeah it's it's not looking good um and um yeah uh, we'll, we'll see ti has been really quiet uh, which is um which is unusual, but we'll see. You know, we'll Honestly, see, we'll see how I this think that's great that he's been yeah. really quiet. Yeah, yeah, he should be. He yeah. should be. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes. And then my second loser is um, the baby for oh. having another case. The um, boxer. Right, the bo- right, the boxer. <laughs> uh, he uh, reportedly knocked a man's tooth out back in December. He was shooting a video at a rental uh, in LA, and the person had like expressly said, "This is not for commercial use." Blah blah blah. You can only have you know X amount of people there because of COVID. He goes on, has forty people there, and when the guy comes to you know ask what's going on, there's this whole thing and. The baby ends up punching the man's tooth out. Mind you, this man's like 64 years old. So <sighs> this is just, the whole thing is terrible. And I think he need, like he either needs therapy or something. Like, you just can't go punching people every single time. So, yeah. The, the, certainly my second loser. And then my third loser is W Mag for telling everyone to go outside and stand by Lord. the tree. <laughs> and then using their little iPhone. Lord. It, 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 those pics. <laughs> oh my God. I the never latest... felt as though I had a a future in creative direction until I saw those books. Like they just it was just an exercise in fuck effort. Like they just said, we don't care. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. So third loser for sure. And yeah, that's it. So uh Teresa, this was a pleasure as always um you have of course are always invited to come back and before we leave let the people know where they can find you on social media okay you can follow me at r-e-e-s-i-e underscore r-i-c-h that's reese underscore rich and that's on instagram and on twitter love it love it love it episode 35 no hipster spot talk to you next time bye bye